everybody. Hey guys. It's time for church. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. So let's get started with our four core values. You want to kick us off? Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. Our first value is to love God. Love God, right? Yeah. I wonder why that's the first value. You know why? We love God because God is love and he first loved us. That sounds like it's very important to know it's that we, so God important. loves us. It's the most important thing to remember is that God loves you. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Can I do our second core value? Do the second value. All right. The second core value is love people. And you know why we love people? We love people because God loves all people. Wait, you said all, like everybody? Even the ones that bug you sometimes. Like even my little brother? Yeah. My little sister? Mm-hmm. My little cousin? All of them. All of them. All of them. All people. All people. Okay, God loves all people. That's that's good. Yeah, and what's our third value, Jay? Our third value is do your best. And what happens when we do our best? When we do our best, God does the rest. All the rest. That's right. I used to have to remember that a lot on my math test. Yeah, um, math, math can be tough sometimes. It can be tough. Yeah. Yeah. But you, all, you, all you can do is do your best. I just did my best. That's all you can do. You want to you say our fourth core value together? Yeah, let's do it. On a count of three. Ready? One, One two, two, three. Have fun. I love to have fun. We have fun because God, he gives us joy. Joy is so great. Now, we can show that joy by worshiping. So everybody stand up on your feet, get a little wiggle in your body, and let's get ready to worship. There's joy. Praise. Say 
kids, it's time for the scripture memory verse. And it's super simple this week, so I want to see everybody stand to their feet. Come on, stand up. That's right. Okay, the first time, I'll say it and you repeat after me. And then on the second time, we'll all do it together. Are you ready? If you're ready, say ready. Awesome. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. That was awesome, you guys. Okay, now we're going to say it all together. Okay? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. That was awesome, you guys. I'll see you next week. Hey kids, welcome to week number two in our Philippians series on joy. Now today's main point is that true joy comes from a humble heart. So to start off, what I want to talk about is what does it mean to have a humble heart? To be humble simply means to not be prideful. It means to put others before yourself and to realize that we can't do anything without God. And it's because of Him and the joy that He gives us that we're able to do things. So let's take a look into this series on joy. humble simply means to not be prideful, to think of others before yourself, and to realize that without God, we couldn't do anything. It's so important to Jesus for us to have a humble heart and to put others before ourselves. So what I want us to do is talk about how we can have a humble heart. So I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. So that means that when we do something, we're not doing it to get credit, we're not doing it because we have the ability, we're doing it because God gave us the ability. So when we put God first, we're saying, God, whatever I do is because of you, and whatever I can do is because you gave me the ability to do that. So that's how we can have a humble heart and put God first. Now, how do we put others first? Well, in that same verse, it says to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. And what that means is that we don't want to do anything for ourselves. If we're cleaning our room, we're doing it because it blesses our parents. It blesses Jesus. I don't generally want to clean my room because, oh man, I really love cleaning my room or I really love taking out the trash. This is my favorite thing to do. I do it because it blesses my parents, it blesses God, and it's what He would want me to do. So when we do things for God and for others, it takes the focus off of ourselves. That way we don't run around and say, hey, did you guys see what I did? Did you see what I did? If someone says, wow, John, good job on what you did, I can say it wasn't because of me, it was because of Jesus. It's very important that we live a God-centered life not a me-centered life. We do everything for Jesus. It takes the focus off of us, and that's part of having a humble heart. So how do we get that humble heart that Jesus wants us to have? Well, let's keep looking in Philippians chapter 2. This time we're going to read verse 3. And it says that your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. Now, we know that Jesus is so humble, and He loves us so much, and he's full of joy and peace and patience. And Jesus wants to be our best friend. And so if we have the same attitude as Jesus, we will have a humble heart. We will love people. And we will trust that God knows best. So the next thing that I want to talk about with having a humble heart is how do we live day to day with a humble heart? Because sometimes we can make the decision, maybe you'll make it today in church to have a humble heart 
to ask Jesus into your heart so that you can have a humble heart. And it's great to make that decision. But what happens tomorrow? Or a week from now? Or two weeks from now? Are you still going to have that same heart? And the answer is yes, you can if you choose to. Now for this answer, on living with a humble heart day to day, we're going to turn again to the second chapter in Philippians, and this time we're going to read verse 13. In verse 13 it says, For it is God who works in you and will act according to His good purpose. So the way to live day to day and have a humble heart, one way, is to ask God every day to give you that same humble heart. And that way when you ask Jesus to give you that heart, it's Him working through you. That way when you do something, it's not you doing it, it's Jesus doing it. And it's you doing it for Jesus. And it's this awesome circle where you're doing it for Jesus and He gives you the ability to do it. You want to have a humble heart for Jesus and He gives you that humble heart so that you can glorify Him. Because you see, being humble, truly humble, where you're not putting on a show and, hey, did you guys see how humble I was? But when you're genuinely humble and really thinking about Jesus first and putting others before yourself, that can only come from Jesus. And how do we do that? The way you can put others before yourself is to genuinely take interest in them, to really be interested in what they are. Now, this could be with your brother or your sister. This could be with your friends at school. This could be with your parents. Take a genuine interest in other people. So humility is not thinking of yourself less, but it's thinking about others more. When you take a genuine interest in other people, it makes them feel so good. When I was younger, I had a friend who loved to play paintball. And I now really love playing paintball, but back then I had never played before. But he was my best friend. And because he liked playing paintball, I took a genuine interest in playing paintball with him. And we would go to the paintball field and we would play. And I loved it. Now, if I had never taken a genuine interest in what my friend liked, I wouldn't have realized that I liked it too. And what this did was two things. It helped me find something else that I like to do. But most importantly, it blessed my friend. And it put him first. And it made me think about myself less and others more. And that's what humility is. And that's how we can live humility day to day. So what does it look like for us to have a humble heart? Well, in Philippians 2, verse 14, it tells us. It says to do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault, in a crooked and deprived generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. So when you truly have a humble heart, you're not complaining about things, you're not arguing back with your parents or arguing with teachers at school or at a church. When you have a humble heart and you're putting others first, you aren't complaining if someone asks you to help them clean their room, if your brother or sister need help with something. You put them first and you say, sure, I'd love to. And that way you look more and more like Jesus every day. And it says that you'll shine like stars in the universe. And you know how bright stars are. If you ever go out into a field in the middle of the night when it's dark everywhere and you look up, you see all these stars and they're super bright. That's what Jesus says you'll be like if you have a humble heart. You'll shine like stars in the universe. And that's pretty cool. Now, I was curious if you guys knew what it meant to have a humble heart. And so I actually went out and asked some of you what you thought it meant to have a humble heart or if you had ever done something where you put others before yourself. Here's what you said. Humble heart means um, you're happy, you're not, you're not disappointed, you're not dispeaceful. I think it means like what you instead of watching yourself, you could watch it keep your eyes on other people. Is a humble heart a big fat chicken? We let them go first because we love them, and um, that's that's what we do all the time. I think a humble heart was when the heart cracks. Um, a humble heart. Another word for a humble heart is called an act of true love.
when somebody says, I don't want to play with you. My parents have a humble heart. Well, I am kind of one. Because they always look out for me. So, uh, well, something is about to fall. If something or someone is about to fall on the cliff, you go over there and save them. <laughs> uh, I. I was playing it. So. And then there was a boy that was really lonely. He didn't have any friends. And then, uh, he then he fell on a wood trip. And then he hurt his knee really bad. And then I I decided to stop playing with my friends and go get him. So when at school needed help, and so I checked their work. I put it on the shelf for everybody. For my grandmother, I helped her with the laundry and I folded it with her. Like a, a singing show because I sing good. Because if someone, um, I do this a lot of times, um, if my friend is down, I pick him up. And I helped vacuum with her, and I, and I helped her put her bed together too. And if he's bleeding, um, he, I'll take them to the nurse. I think it's very important to have a humble heart, and I think God wants us to have a humble heart. It is important to have a humble heart because um, it makes people get along. Because these, everybody's their, his children, he wants to treat them the right way. Is um, having a humble heart um, is a way to respect God. God likes us to care about others before ourselves, not be selfish and angry. That's awesome. I love your answers. Some of those answers were pretty silly, but some of them were really, really great. There were so many of you that I asked who did so many great things for other people. You helped kids at school who maybe dropped their books or dropped a pencil. You went and you picked it up for them. Or maybe you had a brother or sister who needed help cleaning their room, and instead of complaining or arguing, you said, sure, I'll help. And that's what it means to have a truly humble heart. Jesus loves it when you have a humble heart because that's what he wants you to have. He has a humble heart, and he wants us to all live with humble hearts. So when you put other people first, and don't complain, and don't argue, and have a humble heart, it makes Jesus so happy. And when you do things for other people, and you put others before yourself, it's gonna make you happy, and it's gonna fill you with so much joy. It's incredible, and it's an awesome thing and that's why the main point for today is that true joy comes from a humble heart. We'll see you guys next time.